Do you ever measure heavy metals in your blood? Have you done that? I have once um, when I was doing a lot of competitive cycling. I was on the cycling team at Western and wanted to be a pro cyclist and moved to Boulder, Colorado, where I got into this line of work. And I started to feel really off. And um, we would train around rush hour. And I found that I had a lot of cadmium and arsenic. Mm -hmm. And yep. this was a urine exposure. So you take okay. DMPS to kind of move things around or DMPS or DMSA, I believe, um, to kind of stir the pot a little bit. And then you you do a 24-hour urine collection and then send a sample of that Got to it. a lab. And yeah, my cadmium and lead and arsenic were quite high. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I ask because, you know, it's certainly not something that, that most people are going to get from a primary care blood test. But that's, again, one of the things that we look at in our comprehensive blood testing here at Optispan are a panel of heavy metals, right? Sure. And again, most people don't have any problem, but there are, are a subset of people who are pretty high, especially mercury. You see oh, a yeah. lot of people are get, eating a lot of sushi. And I mean, we all, it's generally good advice to eat more fish, but if you're, you know, high in mercury, you want to be very thoughtful about the kind of fish you're eating. And so, you know, it, it, it costs money. All of this stuff costs money, but I do think with some level of frequency, I don't know what the right frequency is. It it is in. It's probably in your best interest to at least know where you're at. Maybe I think maybe once a decade is enough. Like I don't know. Again, but if you are reaching, you know, potentially toxic levels of some of these heavy metals, the only way you're probably going to know is either you start having symptoms, which is bad, or you you measure it and you find out, and you then can take steps to to try to figure out where it's coming from and then and then ameliorate it. Yeah, uh, it's a really important point, I think, under-recognized, absolutely. I think this idea of environmental exposures is something that we're all starting to be more aware of. And 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 this is, this is another thing I struggle with is it's really easy to scare yourself, right? If you yeah. really start thinking about like the microplastic, we can talk about microplastics, right? I mean, Jesus Christ, it seems like every everything <laughs> in our environment is trying to kill us sometimes. Right. And so you want to be careful not to, over uh, uh, uh over stress yourself in thinking about these things but you also want to try to be aware of what are the environmental exposures that are under my control that actually may be having a significant impact on my health and, yeah. and you know metals are one um what are what are some of the other ways that you think about this microplastics i think is probably something you've thought about a lot but what are some of the major environmental factors that you think about when you're thinking about health and that that a lot of people maybe aren't as aware of as they could or should be yeah great question you know the microplastics because as of late we have the study from new england, new england journal of medicine where individuals undergoing a carotid artery assessment yeah. they pulled plaque i'm sure you read that study yeah. in march of this year finding significant correlations it was a there was a 4.5 fold increased odds ratio of having a cerebral vascular or a stroke or some complication in the brain and that correlated with higher levels of microplastic in the carotid artery plaque so that was a huge study one just came out i think on the 14th of August, finding, and these were individuals in China who presented at the hospital with acute coronary syndrome, so symptoms of a heart attack, and they wanted to look at microplastic exposure in their blood, and they used mass spec to look at five or six of the common polyethylene and all these different microplastics, and they had a control group that was not experiencing chest significant correlations with severity of the acute, acute coronary syndrome and or heart attack or stroke-like symptoms and microplastic levels in the blood. There was another recent study, I think it was June of this year, that found that individuals going in to get a penile prosthesis for severe erectile dysfunction, well, since they were doing the prosthesis, this was a small study, it was eight or 12 subjects. They were in there anyway, they sampled some of the penile tissue. The, the severity of erectile dysfunction correlated with the degree of microplastic contamination in the penile tissue. So to me, this is a huge factor. You know, if we're looking at incidence of heart disease, uh, the microplastics found in, in the atherosclerotic plaque, at least in the carotid arteries, um, I think this is a huge thing that we should be focusing on because just something benign, like every day I go to Starbucks, I get my coffee on the way to work, that can released like 200,000 pieces of microplastic. This was, uh, Cedar sinai looked at, at the amount of microplastics from disposable coffee cups. It's quite significant. Mm -hmm. So just making these small shifts, like yeah. I saw you this morning with a ceramic mug, you know, bringing that, I have one with me, you know, not drinking out of plastic uh, bottles. Right. I was gonna say, sometimes it's obvious, right? The plastic bottles, everybody gets it. You wouldn't necessarily think a coffee cup, cup. that you're gonna get at the coffee shop is gonna, have microplastics in it, right? Right, but most of the, if you look at the coffee cup, they have a thin polyethylene lining sure. there to prevent yeah. it from penetrating. Yeah. And same even at Whole Foods, and, and the CEO, former CEO of Whole Foods, 
uh, before Amazon acquired uh, them, knew about this. Those little brown, they look organic and recyclable, compostable, but in, in even that packaging, there's a polyethylene You're lining. about the boxes. The box can, for yeah, to-go. Yeah, I've eaten out of those several times. Me too, multiple. <laughs> so that's the thing, we're all exposed to yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and I mean, I think that's important, like, because I think you're right, people need to be aware of this, but you don't have to freak out about it. Like, yeah. Again, it's this sort of, you know, cumulative exposure over years or decades that probably starts to lead to increased risk for some of these things. And so, yes, we've all been exposed, some of us more than others. Um, but the important point is to recognize if if you are being exposed on a routine basis in your daily life, what steps can you take to reduce those exposures? Exactly. And something else, just like a potato chip bag, you know, that the lining of that, you probably shouldn't be eating anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, once I became aware of this, I'm like, Oh, processed food in general, I'm just, I'm yeah. done with it. Yeah. You know, even I, if it's gluten-free. I wish gluten more free. people would get that. I mean, I agree. It took yeah. me decades longer <laughs> than it probably should have to get there. But yeah. yeah, if more people would recognize that, that would be a huge boost to public health. Yeah. So there's that. And then filtering the water, mm. you know, municipal water, um, not only does it have fluoride and chlorine and things like that, but depending upon where you live, uh, parts of the Midwest are actually the worst. So I used to work in Chicago and I remember looking at this report that came out that finding that found a lot of arsenic from the farming. There's a lot of corn and soy and stuff grown in the Midwest, ends up in the water supply, as well as atrazine. And atrazine can cause tra- transgenerational epigenetic issues and all these problems, you know. And you've probably seen the pictures of frogs that are yeah. gender dysphoric and stuff. It, it, that atrazine, among other things, can cause some of that. So I think your water needs to be filtered, you know, t- as the best as you can. If it's a Brita, if that's all you can afford, fine. That's better than nothing. Not drinking out of plastic and trying to minimize, you know, part of, I think, processed food, the health effects or ramifications from consuming processed food is linked to the packaging itself. Yeah. 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 I, th- I, I, I agree. I think the, the only thing I would maybe add to that is, uh, again, to sort of reinforce that this is, it takes a lot of exposure probably to lead to significant problems. So like if you're on a hike, or you're somewhere where the only access you have is to bottled water, like don't freak out. Having bottled water once in a while is not going to significantly increase your risk for heart disease or dementia or or whatever. But to the extent you can create new habits where you avoid as much of this stuff as possible, you should probably try to do that. Excellent point. Yeah. Um, okay. So that, that, that's great. I guess the other thought I have about microplastics and I'm, again, I'm not a, I'm not a microplastic denier at all, but I do, given my scientific background, I do sort of wonder if, I, I think it's going to be a while before we actually know what the real risk profile looks like, because I do wonder of these high profile studies that get a lot of attention, you know, how many studies tried to do the same thing and didn't see a correlation. Like you just don't know because there's a publication bias. The other question I've got, maybe you know the answer to this, I haven't researched it yet, is are there yet clinical tests that we can use to actually measure the microplastic levels in our bodies at the at either way, whether it's urine or, or blood, do those exist? Are they available? Not to my knowledge. I'm sure there is one out there, but yeah. I haven't, I haven't personally done this. It would be but... really useful, obviously. Oh, to yeah. Have that. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Um, I, I'm sure someone's working on it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So TBD, but yeah. that's probably something that we should also start measuring when we have the, the capacity. Yeah. 